to I met you in Philippines in a short-term mission, and uh, it was two and a half years ago, and I think that it changed my life. But you know, I want I have one question. Uh, you are American. Why Philippines? And what are you doing there? So, yes, two and a half years, and it was um, just great being with you and your team. And um, I'm happy to be here in your country. And why Philippines? Because honestly, we prayed and asked the Lord, where, where do you want us to go? Where do you want us to serve? And my pastor um, felt called to the Philippines, and he started going there 30 years ago. So after about five years, I began to join him for once a year. And we started at that time in 1999, we started Hope Centers. And that's an organization that feeds children. And then after about 10 years, we also added to this uh, program, Dream Release, which is educating children. So we felt called to do this, in, in particular in Asia. And we're presently feeding about 2,000 children on a weekly basis and educating about 250 kids. And we're all over the area of Philippines. And I guess why? Because one, we feel like the Lord asked us to do that and put that area on our heart. And two, because we love it. We love the kids there very much. <laughs> okay, uh, how many, how many uh, Hope Centers do you have uh, in Philippines, in all country, in different islands? And how many um, workers you have uh, in that in your hope centers? And how many volunteers working in those centers? C can you can you talk about a little bit about those centers and how they work uh, during the week or on Saturdays? On, on can you talk about that? Okay. So we have 17 centers. Um, including our partnership here in Lithuania. And um, workers, I have uh, the people who are my administrators in the Philippines, Brenda and Pong, and then each center has at least one or two primary workers that are um, pastors or head people in churches. And they're the overseers of each area. And then our volunteers, we could have 100 volunteers or more because we try to employ parents. Employ meaning we try to give them jobs, not paying jobs, but helping them. Um, for instance, moms help us cook meals. And what's good about that is it gives us the opportunity to train parents in um, you know, what's nutritious, what's in their region to use, like what kind of vegetables do they grow right there. And, um, and then we also try to take the opportunity to teach children and families hygiene, just very simple, ordinary hygiene, because in a third world country, that saves lives. And so it gives us an opportunity on, on that side. And then every, every week the children come Every center is different. Some centers, they might come two or three times a week and get what, what they call a merienda or a snack. And then um, they come for a meal, typically on Saturdays. We do our feeding in one, one area is the Sunday after church. And they can come to those areas also for tutoring, mentoring. The older kids in our Hope Centers have to help with the younger kids. And now we're, we're seeing our older kids who are graduating or in high school helping the little guys, and they've grown up in Hope Centers. So um, that's, I like that. That's a big reward for them and for us. With our school program, all of the older children that are in school have to mentor. They have to be a part of a Hope Center. They have to go serve. So we're trying to teach our kids about giving back, that it's not all about getting, 
but that they get to give back to their community and to their church and, and to their families. So I think that we've um, seen a lot of success. You are a Christian, you know, and that's that that mission also are a Christian is Christian, uh, and and you, you you meant that you uh, I heard in your in your um, talking that you um, working with Christ, uh, with Christians with the churches, how churches uh, how um, uh, faith in Christ is important in 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 that mission is that a primary. A task or, 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 or think you know how, how, how you can, can talk you know they're just <laughs> so yes our organization is Christ centered and um, how how we grow it and how we work is through local churches and we've had great success in doing that how we would grow that is what I call organically which means that we're when we first started, places we visited, we started centers. And the people didn't necessarily have our vision or our heart or, or maybe a strong vision for the children. They wanted to help kids. Everybody wants to help kids. But they didn't have follow through. They weren't able to um, make, you know, to, to be reliable or accountable. So um, over the last 20 years we've we've had to make changes and so now what we do is in fact um, we grow only what I call organically which means only th through the local church we work because um, I believe for missions for us the kids have to have a place to go families have to have a place where they can be accountable I'm not there so we we want them plugged into the local church that's the people who are going to serve them and help them. And so it's, it's just our story, and we've had good success with that. So if we want to open a new center, it would only have to, it would be through a reference. Like, this is an area where we know the church or we know the pastor. They already are loving the children, and we just want to come alongside that. We want to partner with that. We don't need to start a new work. We just want to encourage their work. I strongly believe that the church is very important to you know and we have to do mission through the church and church have to do has to do a mission you know and 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 yeah it's 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 very good to hear that um, also you know uh, how responds uh, the American church to your mission you know how Christian from your church from your uh, town from your country uh, respond to that mission you know uh, that they know that it's a Christian but you know they know that uh, you feed children and and could you talk about that how Americans respond and how American uh, Americans involve in that well in our church we're a very outward focused church so so weekly we do outreaches in our church not only that we feed kids in our local area and every sunday kids come to church they get breakfast every single sunday because a lot of our kids are are poor and they come to church hungry so um every week they get an amazing meal like a really good meal and so for us feeding children is normal and natural and who we are and so what we do in the mission field or what we do in Philippines or other or Lithuania or wherever we're at is going to be the same thing we're doing in our church. So we're not doing anything differently. You know, we're, our church, what you see Sunday in our church is what we do around the world. And I'm very proud of that. I love our church. I love that our church has a heart for the poor. Uh, supportive, absolutely very much they support not just in prayer and encouragement but in dollars so they um, they believe in what we do and so uh, that's an encouragement to us they're they're you know they support us for Christmas for the kids they support us monthly in our feedings and um, they allow us time even to share like when I go back I'll share my trip in the church 
So the, the congregation is very aware of what we do, and um, that's just the DNA of our church. And um, so I'm, I really like that, that we, we're the same on the inside as we are on the outside. Uh, and um, I met you in Philippines, and I know that you do some short-term missions. You know, I know that uh, for, uh, from your church, people also went to Philippines, but you also invite people from all the world. You know, in our team, when I was twice in Philippines, uh, I met guys from the States, from the uh, England, from uh, Japan, uh, and also Lithuanian guys. So, um, okay, how you you know reach these these people, and what do you think about this short-term mission, uh, about team members, and about that, about importance of short-term missions? Uh, can they do impact for people whom we serve, and for those who are going to serve? That's a big question. <laughs> Well, I don't take anybody on a trip that has not been recommended or that we have some relationship with. Uh, we've taken people on trips that didn't have our heart and they wanted to go just for an experience, and um, that doesn't work well. <laughs> um, our, our places that we go are ongoing work, and we go back there and we support them and we love them so I don't want to take anybody that that could do any kind of harm to our work or just be very casual about it because it's such a passion for us so we do uh, I don't know if you know this word but it's called vet we, we vet our people we we they have to fill out an application we have to know them they have to have taken other mission trips um, because, as you know, when you get people in a place where they haven't ever been and the culture is different and it's hot and you're tired, um, it can cause, cre create problems. Yeah. So, um, so the teams that you've met were medical teams and they were all people that, again, were, it's an organic thing. It's we knew them or they were brought by a relative who could say yes, this person, you know, we knew they had traveled or they were going to be helpful on the field. And so it's, it's, um, it's, it's a process to go on a trip with us. And um, it's very important to take people who have a heart who are going to treat the children the way we want them treated and, and the adults and who are going to be um, an asset to our team who uh, everybody has to play. Everybody has to do something. You don't just get to go and observe. And so um, that's not for everybody. And it's hard to travel, as you know. You spend a lot of hours on an airplane, and um, you don't sleep a lot, and um, you sit on buses for a long time. But um, that's team. You know, I, I always think of the nation of Israel and how, how God put them through difficult times together and the result of that was they forged a nation. And that's how I want my teams to be, that, that at the end of a trip, we forged a friendship and a relationship um, that's going to support kids somehow, whether it's in Lithuania or Philippines. You know? So you're a perfect example of, of coming back, and God just watered that vision for you. And now you're opening a center. So that, that was good fruit. And um, that's that's what I like. I, 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 you know, after that, after my trip, you know, I started to uh, rethink, to you know, to um, renew my understanding of. I can I can say you no know, Christianity and and and, and mission, um, and I realized that mission is there where you are. Yeah, and 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 uh, you cannot think that mission on uh, is only in Philippines, in Africa, somewhere outside, somewhere far, far away. Mission is there where you live, and the mission is people who surround you, and 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 it's it's uh, I think important. Uh, uh, and now you are in Lithuania, 
in the new new day center we have you know new room not everything perfect but we are starting and and we enjoy that and uh, your fifth time here in Lithuania could you could you just say you know what you think about our country uh, what uh, encourages you to come here to spend time it's also uh, an offer it's also you know uh, you have to spend money time energy uh, why are you here what motivates you to come here in, in that country in that small country and 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 sometimes very cold <laughs> sometimes. well i was invited to come to lithuania for the first time uh by andrus and matet um, who help us in in centers he's lithuanian she is filipina and I came here, and my first impression is your country is gorgeous. It's beautiful. Just physically, your country is so beautiful to me. And I felt something here, but I didn't know what that was. And I, I never really thought I would come back, you know. And then after the second time, I don't even know why I got invited, actually, but I, they asked me to come back. And that is where I felt like I had something in my heart birthed for your country. And, you know, it's, it is a small country, and I think it's sort of kind of nestled or placed in this amazing place. And, and when I was there on my second trip, I felt like the Lord told me this was a light in the neighborhood. That, that Lithuania was going to be a country that was a light to Europe. And, and I thought, that's interesting because you're so small. You're so tiny. But, you know, it just takes a little bit of light in the darkness and you can see it. And so I began to pray about your country. And then I met you guys on the trip. And um, I knew I was going to be coming back to Lithuania. And so my impressions are, is that you are strategic, um, not only in the placement of where you are, but I think that God is going to start and shake your country in a way that is, is really going to uh, infect and affect Europe and the countries around you. There's something very special going on here in the spirit, I feel. And... Um, I, I just think it's it's going to break open, and so I want to be a part of that. Honestly, I really do, and I love your country. We pray for your country. Our church now prays for Lithuania, and um, I hope we keep coming back, and we keep coming back, and you guys keep going to the Philippines, and that we continue to be partners in in ministry. Um, you know, just for the kingdom. I. I appreciate, you know, uh, our spiritual, you know, these connections, you know, their, their prayers. I think that, you know, God doing some things, you know, uh, through the people, through the, our communication, through our talks, through our works together. So uh, it's very uh, important for me personally and I think for our church uh, and for, I think for believers in Lithuania. Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm thinking. Um, some, I, I'm asking question for me, for myself. You know, what can I say for those guys, for Christians, for those believers, or you know, half believers, and who maybe knows a little bit about God, or maybe they are belie believers for many years. How can we encourage them? to think uh, that they are called to do mission, that they are, uh, that God inviting people to do. You know, we, we cannot just take them and put them in some, some places, but we, can we, what, what can we do, you know, just to encourage them to think that God something want to do in, in you, change something in you and do something through you. What words? Well, I actually think you said it earlier, and that is mission is here. So I didn't just wake up one day and go to the Philippines. I was doing missions locally in my church. I also think it starts in your family. 
if you're if you're not loving and caring for your family, you're not going to love and care for people in other countries. So um, so start there. And you know, some of us have families that are difficult to love, maybe. And so I would ask for a heart to love my family. And then your neighborhood. And, you know, I tell people, just look at your neighbors. Um, one of the things I used to do was bake brownies. And I would just take them to my neighbors. Just, just to get in the habit of doing something for others, right? And then we would pack groceries for the poor at our church. We still do. So I made sure my family, we went and packed groceries for the poor. That it just little things that that wasn't flying to the other side of the world. That was my neighborhood, and um, and I still do that. Like I I will write cards to people if you if you can't get out if the weather's cold if you don't have transportation, you can write a note and mail it to somebody that just says I just wanted to encourage you today. That's mission, you know. And I think if you'll just start looking at what's around you and, and asking God, give me eyes to see this, you know? And is it the kids? Is it bringing them in and giving them a piece of cake? Is it um, just a pat on them, you know, especially with the children we minister to, they don't get encouragement. They don't get somebody who says, good job. Or how, how are you doing today? Or even just learning their name. Learn the kids' names in your neighborhood, you know, and just greet them. That's mission. And so I think it's very important to understand that mission is not going across the world. Mission is what are you doing today in your family and in your neighborhood? And then beyond, what are you doing in your church? I mean, is your church focused on people outside of your church? Because if you're not, you might have a problem in your church. You know, we, we, want, to, we want to look outward as well as minister to those people inward. And how do you encourage your church to go? You're doing it. Take them. Invite them. Let's go. Let's go do this. And um, we're always taking people. We are always taking people. We go to the old folks' home. We go to the neighborhood. We go see kids in our church. We're always going out. And we're always taking people. So I think mission starts at home. I don't think it starts in the Philippines or Lithuania. It starts in your neighborhood. And as you say, you know that <coughs> your mission mission is Christ-centered. So I think that um, that energy, the strategy, the ideas to to do mission are coming from the Christ. So uh, and strength and and also uh, everything mm -hmm. comes from the Christ. And thank you for those thoughts. Thank you for your um, encouragement and, and your being here. Thank you. We appreciate that. You know, I appreciate that. You know, and I would like to say thank you. And, yeah.